Hello there, I hope that you're having a wonderful day today. I'd like to invite you into part four of four of this extended portrait painting demonstration. You will now have access to every single brushstroke involved in the development of this painting. Now I did say that I would keep the background brush, so I think I'm gonna need it now. Uh, for right over here. And even the nose, I think um, I can push the chroma a little bit on the nose, but I don't know, chroma isn't really bothering me right now. I think since what I'm trying to do is make a more realistic painting, I should probably come back to this area now that I have smaller brushes. So let's see, let's revisit the wing of the nose. So with our MVP, most valuable player, I'm gonna push this dark even more. And it's going to taper off and get warmer up here. See how we're starting to describe much more volume here now as we're starting to gradate these tones. And of course I can't ignore this light plane here, but for that, oh dear. Okay, I mixed up my brushes, which is okay. I'm just gonna clean off this brush. Flake white. Remember flake white helps me to just get more paint onto the brush. All right, so let's see here. I can't forget this shape. For the nasal bone. And as I put that shape in, I'm also thinking of, you know, structurally, I'm thinking of the nasal bone here, you know, and the glasses resting on that nasal bone, and how, how much is that plane facing the light? And uh, I don't think it's facing the light that much, so I'm gonna try to knock down the value a little bit, but it's also, it's actually the glaring, so that's why it appeared so dark. With our MVP. Our alizarin crimson permanent. And then of course it's going to uh, get a little bit darker. I think I've already described it enough, but right around here. It's gonna, it's gonna make it even darker. right around there and then it's going to taper. Let's see if I can get a value that I want. It's gonna taper off over here. Because the form is turning inwards towards the eye socket. And again, I, I tend to move all around. I try to see the picture all at once. So now I think that the eyebrows, whereas they were just a gray brush stroke or a warm brush stroke, now they're gonna have some more substance to them. So now even the eyebrows are going to receive some like light and shadow planes. All right into here, right into here. And remember there is, I, I will never tell you, you must paint this way. I will never tell you uh, don't paint like this or anything like that. I would never discourage you in that kind of way. Uh, 
I think it's important to try as many different approaches as possible until you find one that works for you. And then when you find one that works for you, test yourself. Always test yourself. I find that too often we get comfortable when something works and then we stay there. We, we park ourselves, we plant ourselves, and, and then we just don't push any further. And I think it's important to always push. Always try to always try to make today's painting better than yesterday's. At this point, I'm just rambling. So I'm going to try to stick to these shapes here. Whoops. That is my light brush, which now has a dark value. Uh-oh. I have to clean it off again. Oh, I think it's fine. Whatever. I think it'll be fine. So now, again, I'm going to try to, since this is a smaller brush, and I need some smaller touches here now. Just pushing these shapes. Notice how it's appearing much more realistic. I hope. I hope. Now with the cadmium red, I'm mixing actually right into the lighter values. It's because this plane still, even still, after all that, still needs more adjusting. All of these little subtle shapes now. And I think that the bulb of the news may be more round than uh, I was describing it. So I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, Try to get that color back. So with the cadmium red, the flake white, our MVP, which is a lizard and crimson permanent. Just trying to get that shape. So it's definitely glaring quite a bit, and uh, I'll tell you what, let's see here. I'm actually going to try to reduce the glare with a uh, with one of the brushes that I cleaned off. There we go. So that should help to reduce the glare. And now that I have this brush, let's now use this brush to soften these edges. because edges are definitely a thing, especially if you're trying to make your painting look even more realistic. See how now that we're going to soften certain edges, so I'm going to leave that one, uh, hmm. I'm going to leave this one a little bit sharp. Okay, so I had autofocus turned off. This thing is set to manual, but I just noticed on my screen it was trying to focus on my brush again, which is not good. So I'm sorry about that. I'm doing the best that I can with the camera. I'm gonna leave that sharp, but I'm gonna soften this. Leave this sharp, but I'm gonna soften this. So all into here now. Very delicate edges now. I 
So again, this is another reason why I really like synthetics because you can use them to soften quite a bit. And it, I still feel like this plane is too, uh, how shall I put it? It's too light and I need to turn it away from the light a little bit more. So let's see. And right around here, uh, see on the corner right next to the mouth, that shape here, there's almost always a darker transition. It's like the, the mouth is like the face turning into itself. Very weird way to put it, but I don't know how to put it any uh, more simply. And what I mean by turning into itself, it's like you see the flesh tone going out, 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 and then in. And as it goes in, uh, we have this little fold here that's getting darker. Very subtle though, very slight. And these are those magical values. You know, these are the points in the painting where things really start to look realistic. Shadow brush, push that accent even darker. So I think that I'm kind of missing a plane here. So with the shadow brush, burnt umber, a lizard and crimson permanent. There, so there's a plane here that I was kind of missing. And you know, what I like about this technique uh, is that since I'm using a fast dryer, you know, burnt umber is a very, very fast drying color. Add a fast dryer to that and you have a very fast drying oil paint. And fast, I don't mean like in an hour or so. I mean like maybe in three hours. I don't know how long it's been now in the painting. Um, now it's starting to get a little more tacky, which is a good thing actually because it, it allows me much more control around here. So, you know, I, I'm learning every single day. And uh, I think that once the paint starts to get tacky, maybe in the first, I don't know, after the first like uh, two, three hours, whatever, it's time to start to go into these half tones, the magical half tones. And I know I just, I'm using the shadow brush for the light. Whoops, but oh well. Because now we can just kind of marry these shapes to one another. And what I mean by tacky is the paint is just gripping more. It's sticking more. And so that the fact that it's sticking more uh, is actually enabling me to bind these shapes to one another. So that's what I meant by marrying these shapes to one another, meaning binding them together. Through sickness and in health, these shapes will be bounded to one another forever and ever. That's what I mean. So, now that I have that shape in there, can you tell now that it's starting to have much more realism, all of this stuff, and it's not hard, um, you know, better, it's, it's easier said than done, but we're doing it. And then as we move down here, something's gonna happen there. It's, it's gonna be lighter, uh, so I'll tell you what, I'm gonna use the same brush, just take a little bit of flesh tone, very carefully now, put in this lighter plane. Very, very subtle, super subtle. Now, I think that perhaps with the eye, 
and maybe showing too much of the uh, the iris. So with the uh, MVP, so the Alizarin Crimson Permanent, we're going to push this up very slightly. And I like that the paint is just facilitating itself. Uh, the fact that these marks can stay, the fact that the paint's getting more sticky, the tackiness is actually something I'm learning how to use to my advantage. And even all throughout here, I can start to put in much more specific tones. It's a little bit of a plane right there. And tell you what, let's try to make this one even more realistic than the, um, the last time I painted Matthew. The last time was with the underpainting and the classical approach and um, this time we just turned it all upside down and we didn't use an underpainting. We didn't even use burnt umber lines. We just went right into flesh tone. And I think it's working though. I think it's working. Now again, I think that uh, these planes, see this one is maybe too light. I know there needs to be a bridgeway between this plane and this plane, but that might be too light. And let's just start out with, I don't know, this one right here. Because I keep losing at that shape. So this might be the area in the painting. You know how there's always an area that will give me the most trouble. There we go. Now talk about subtlety. Now we can put in that intermediate plane that I was talking about. And we can throw in the lighter plane for the wing of the nose. All right, so now that we made these areas a little more realistic, uh, we're gonna do the same kind of thing up here. So I'll tell you what, now with the clean brushes, let me first uh, soften some edges. And this is also giving me a chance to test uh, the areas that are getting, getting tacky. So you can see just like automatically as I soften that edge that we're starting to obtain a much more realistic image. And you know, we can even drag this paint down towards here and let the paint do a lot of the work for us. Where's that shadow brush? Uh, so I did keep that shadow brush, uh, there it is. So just to push these shapes a little bit darker Let's remix that. So the burnt umber. I don't want to lose that greenish tone though. I really do like that greenish tone. I'm just pushing this a little bit darker so that it looks like it's turning away from the light. 
Okay, so now I'm going to switch back to that brush that I was using to uh, soften these shapes. And again, we're going to push some more realism onto the forehead. It's kind of funny. I used to start off with the forehead, and now I'm like working from here to the forehead. So again, there are so many ways to create a painting, especially portrait painting. I'll never let someone tell you that there's just one way or you must do this or you must not do this. You must explore for yourself. All right, so uh, right, right, right there. So that's gonna be a little different, a little warmer. So we're going with our red, so the alizarin crimson permanent, cadmium red medium. Let's throw in some flake white just to add some more volume to the paint. And let's see what this value does. That's actually pretty good, I think. Now you can tell this is starting to become more realistic, starting to become more round, but we can't forget the anatomy, right? So right around here, the uh, you're going to see the superciliary arch and evidence of it will be right here. So with the uh, this value, not only will this give you the corner of the side of the uh, superciliary arch, parietal lobe is here, frontal is right here. So this is going to uh, give us the plane for the frontal region of the skull. It's also going to give us the boundary, the form boundary for the, uh, the superciliary arch, well, the superciliary arch being right over here. And I think we're going to throw in maybe some greenish stuff around here just to add some flavor uh, to the colors. And while I have this down, um, that that's too like it, it's too down. I had that angle off. So with the alizarin permanent, I'm gonna move that shape up. Yeah, I think before I just had it a little too. Uh, I don't know. I had it a little too angled down. He was kind of, I was making him frown. Let's not frown. Smile. <laughs> that must sound really strange right now. But again, it's your pain thing. Do whatever you want with it. I just wanted to lift that shape up a little bit. Now returning to the uh, the planes that I was talking about before. So there, I think I still need to push a little bit more. There we go. Now we're starting to see more volume. But as a result, I'm going to have to return to the shadow color. So burnt umber, sap green. As a result, I'm going to have to push the shadow again just to ensure that I don't lose the, uh, the differentiation or the boundary between light and shadow. And I think that now that I, I, I'm seeing that shape, I feel like I could put a little more of a plane here for the side of the uh, frontal region of the skull. And again, this is why I like using the synthetics because I don't need much now. I don't need to add much more paint. What I want is to steer specific. I want to steer towards the specificity now. So 
So this is going to be the plane right here for the globella. And you know, everyone's globella is a little different, but in particular, uh, this is very small. So we're not going to add any more to it. I think it works the way it is. A little more of our MVP, the Alizarin Crimson Permanent. I think that this is a local value change. The top of the forehead. Because I just think that there might be an area on, um, I don't know why it is, but I, I see something here that's a little bit darker. And now I'm going to start to put in the edge for the uh, hairline. Remember the hairline is a very soft edge. And now I'm going to switch brushes to a clean one. I'm going to get this green just as promised. And I'm going to start to put in some kind of cooler touches here. Just to add some flavor to the flesh tones. And I want the paint to stick. So I'm going to put in some of my medium, the Neo McGill medium, just to, um, to thin out the paint. Remember, thinner paint will stick onto thicker paint. There we go, just a few little glimpses for the highlight and there you go, that's a realistic kind of, hopefully a realistic forehead. So now we're going to venture off towards the hairline. And again, that's what I really, really am starting to like about this, this approach. You know, it's not really a systematic one. It's really just about exploring the shapes. It's really fun. So now as we start to move towards the, uh, the hair, uh, I have to make a decision. Do I want to make the hair more realistic or do I want to make it I don't know, less realistic. Uh, since we made this realistic, let's just make the hair realistic. So in order to do that, we're going to have to push the darks darker. And by doing that, we will make the lights look lighter. And that's how we're going to get some structure onto these shapes. So right around here. So I'm gonna to have to have a light brush and a dark brush. And let's just let's just get right from this shape, right from that area of the palette. No need to complicate things. Now you can see, hopefully now you can see why when I started the painting, I just threw some color on there and, and I said I wanted to eliminate the useless stuff. Because for me, for me, had I started off with that umber drawing, I might have still been in the stage where I was blocking in the light shapes. You know, you, you may spend a very long time trying to get, you know, uh, a simple line for where the mouth needs to fit or whatever, and it's safe. It's a very good way to work, don't get me wrong. Um, it's just, I, I these days I just find that this is a little more, ex I don't even know the word anymore. It puts us more in the state of exploration. And now there's going to be a very well-defined dark shape here as the hair starts to overlap onto the glasses. And of course the back side is gonna get darker, this part, just because the hair, oh sorry, the shape, the form is turning away from the light over here. So we'll push that value even darker, even if we don't see it, even if the photograph is flattening it out over here, we're gonna push it just because we know 
that this area will be turning away from the light quite a bit. And this is the difference between, uh, you know, if you work from photographs all the time, you may not know this, that this area would get darker. It just, it's a matter of form because the form is literally, see this, turning all the way around over there. I'm gonna push some more light. Okay, so now we're gonna to have to uh, look at the ear. So let's use the same brush, add some burnt umber. The burnt umber is getting kind of tacky, uh, which is good, which means it's gonna be gripping more. So burnt umber and our MVP, the alizarin permanent. And you know what the secret is? Don't stress about it, especially with portrait. Don't stress about it. It's not that hard to move a nose. It's not that hard to move a mouth. It's not that hard even to move an eye. It's a little more difficult to move an eye, but don't stress about it. The more comfortable you get, the, the better or the easier it will be for you. Always know what you're after, however. Um, it's okay to not know what you're after, especially in the start, or even, you know, even in this portion of the painting, like, I'm still trying to push the realism, but I'm not dwelling on anything. Like, I'm not going to dwell on if anything is wrong. If the eye is in the wrong place, uh, if one of the eyes is in the wrong place, or if the mouth, or whatever, I'm not going to dwell on it because I'm enjoying just the physical act of putting paint onto the canvas and explaining the experience to you. That's what I, re I really truly love to do and to continue to do this is what my, uh, yeah, I'm getting off topic here. Uh, let's look at the ear, okay? Uh, so again, we can draw a horizontal, but we also have the glasses to help us out. Do I have the glasses a little high? I think I do. Glasses are a little bit high. Maybe they should go down to here, but oh, whatever. I think it's fine the way it is. Like I said, don't stress about it. A little bit of the uh, the red into this area of the palette. And you know, the ear, we don't need that much for the ear. Just enough to get the ear to read, and I'm done with it. All right, so the tragus of the ear, that. Uh, I think that that's in a relatively correct position, but I think that I can describe with a little more accuracy this, this little contour of this shape. Tragus might be too light though, so let's adjust it. Yeah. The tragus was getting too light. Squinting also helps to eliminate information. So when I'm squinting, I just see light, 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 and then the rest is dark. So light here. So light, light, and light over here. One, two, three. That's all I'm seeing when I'm squinting and that's all I need to put down. So let's go ahead, some more of our alizarin crimson permanent, sap green. Let's see, I like to relate the bottom of the ear, so the earlobe to the nose. I think it's a little lower, I need to make it a little lower. So 
So let's just get whatever. Let's just get this. And I think that should be about good there. So now there's some more accents that we can push in the dark, like this one. It's a little bit darker here. And that is because the form again is turning and there's still some ambient light kind of around here. So that's why we're putting that shape. And then as we work our way towards the mandible, oof, the mandible always gives me trouble. Let's try to be very cautious with this, but not dwelling on anything. I think how I have it is fine. I don't need to stress too much about it. So just a few little accents here to define, you know, to add more definition to the mandible, chin, and then we'll be good. So I think it's going to have to get darker there. So let's see if I can get uh, another brush. Let's use this one. Ivory black. Sneak in some warmth with our alizarin crimson permanent. See how much darker we can go. Gonna keep the edges very soft, however. And then all into there, so I'm gonna cool it down. Ultramarine blue. Some more Neo McGilt medium. Let's just add a little brush stroke there. Just for fun. I'm gonna use the fan brush because that did just create a glare. And now the neck is going to have some, some planes, a little bit of a plane change here. Don't need to put too much. And all into here. Let's get the uh, darker brush. Don't need much. Now at this point, I think that I've said what I wanted to say uh, with this portrait painting, but oftentimes when I don't know whether or not to, to leave a painting be, uh, that is whether I'm done with it or not, I usually um, yeah, I take a break and I actually just did, um, I just came back from lunch. So um, I'll show you one little trick here. So if you have a, an iPhone, I'm sure that you can do this with other phones. So. Um, so I actually took a picture of it on my iPhone. So this is what I do. I just go to the editor and go to monotone. So mono, see, you can see on the side there. So I go back and forth between uh, the gray scale on the phone and the uh, just the original color. Gray scale, original color, gray scale, original color. And if I don't see anything in a uh, gray scale that bothers me, then I think that you know, it's usually an indicator that the painting is okay. I should leave the painting be. And, uh, you know, just like always, I think that there are always some little tiny adjustments to make. So I think that maybe right over here. So let's get you in close up. And this is going to be some really, really tiny stuff. And uh, this edge right here, I just want it to be a little softer and a little less choppy. So again, with a dry synthetic brush, see that just like a Photoshop tool, I'm just able to go in and soften that edge. And I think I'm going to make it even softer up here. Very 
very, very soft. Very, very subtle. I mean, not that soft, but it's fairly soft. And now over here, I'm gonna just soften this again. But I do kind of like this style. So remember, I did try to push the realism in these forms a little bit more uh, with this painting. So I tried to make it a little bit more realistic. Uh, but, you know, just in my taste and aesthetic these days, I don't want it to be, you know, too realistic. I don't want it to be too similar to the photograph. Now, one thing you'll notice is, um, you know, with the with the value scheme, I think that I'm contrasting the value scheme uh, a little more than the photo reference because I think in nature, in nature, we would see much, uh, we would see a little more contrast in nature. I feel like photograph or the photographs tend to kind of uh, play down. Uh, the contrast a little bit. Just gonna soften this edge here. And I think these are going to be the very last brush strokes. I don't know, how about this, how about this? Okay, we have this brush here. And uh, there are some little, little marks, some little, uh, whatchamacallit, I don't know if they're uh, birth marks or just little marks here. But again, I don't want to put in too much detail. Just the indication of the texture here. See that? Very simple. And just enough. I don't need to do too much. Just enough to get this to read at a distance. And I think that that's going to be about it for this portrait painting demonstration. Again, every single brush stroke has been filmed. I'm not really sure how long uh, this painting demonstration is going to be. I think that it, it might be around three hours and a half. I don't know, something like that. But again, every single brush stroke is filmed. I, I guided you through everything. Well, you know, the best that I could talking and painting at the same time. You know, sometimes just talking is hard enough. But in any case, I really do enjoy this new format now where I'm able to talk to you, guide you through a portrait painting, and really just take it one step at a time. So again, I really hope that, uh, you know, being able to see the painting and the palette and having me here guide you through the, uh, you know, every step of the way, the best that I can is helping you out. That being said, I wish you the best in all of your artwork, and as always, I'll be back again very soon.